Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is a shock from medical surgical nursing. We will learn introduction of shock causes, features about shock, and then its management. Let's get started. First of all, there is introduction to shock. Shock is a life-threatening condition which is resulted due to poor tissue perfusion to the brain. Mainly, shock is a condition in which there is a lack of oxygen and nutrition supply to the brain. Shock can be classified on the basis of etiology into four types. They are hypovolemic, cardiogenic, obstructive and distributive. Distributive further can be divided into septic, anaphylactic and neurogenic. Hypovolemic shock occurs from inadequate circulating blood volume. It can occur due to hemorrhage, trauma, diarrhea, polyuria, burn. It generally occurs when there is a less volume in the body than required. This is due to decreased cardiac output and low intracardiac pressure. The more volume is lost from the body, the more there is chances that patient will face shock. Cardiogenic shock occurs due to primary dysfunction of one of the ventricles or another. Both of the ventricles have function of pumping the blood towards other organs. So when there is a dysfunction of ventricle, there are chances that there will be shock in the body. Can occur in myocardial infection, chronic congestive cardiac failure or pulmonary embolism and cardiac arrhythmias. Obstructive shock occurs due to blood flow obstruction that disturbs many functions of vital organs. It can occur in pericarditis, tension pneumothorax and massive pulmonary embolism. Distributive shock can occur due to severe infection in the body like septic infection. Also, allergic response of the body, anaphylaxis, and harm to brain that, is brain that is neurogenic. Neurogenic shock can be caused due to paraplegia, quadriplegia, trauma to spinal cord, and spinal anesthesia. Paraplegia is when there is loss of movement of lower extremities. Quadriplegia is when there is loss of movement of each extremity, upper and lower. In pathophysiology of shock, first of all, there is a reduced effective circulating blood volume that results in decreased supply to the veins, venous return, which brings us to reduction of cardiac output. And then there is lack of oxygen supply to the brain, which causes anoxia and shock. What we need to understand is hypovolemic and septic shock starts from this point reduction in effective circulating blood, blood, blood volume. Cardiogenic shock starts from this point, reduction of cardiac output. There are many stages of, of shock. First stage is a non-progressive. This From the first stage, shock can be reversed. Second is a progressive decompensated stage. From second stage, now shock cannot be reversed. And third is irreversible stage. In non-progressive stage, first of all, there is blood loss, fluid loss, due to which there is stimulation of parsimotor center of the medulla. After that, there is sympathetic, adrenal, or hormonal response by the body. Because of this sympathetic, adrenal, hormonal response, there is production of some hormones that causes muscles to contract and function properly. As a result, there is water and sodium retention by the kidney that helps to replenish plasma volume. Due to constriction of the blood vessels, there is a rise in arterial pressure and blood perfusion to heart and brain. Likewise, fluid moves from interstitial space to capillary that results in a restorage of plasma volume. From Non-progressive stage, shock can be reversed. 
Now from this stage, it is difficult to reverse that. Shock continues from the previous stage. There is now systolic and diastolic blood pressure fall. Also, there is a reduced blood supply to the brain. Because of reduction of blood supply, our body starts anaerobic metabolism. And there is metabolic acidosis and tissue ischemia because of that, which results in decreased cardiac and cerebral perfusion. From this step, there is no chance of reversal because low perfusion to heart and brain has begun from the last step. Irreversible stage is, and the shock continues, and then metabolites accumulate in different parts of the body. Products of metabolism accumulates in different parts of the body where it should not be accumulated. Because of that, there is increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure, increase in capillary volume, and decrease in vascular volume. There is decrease in venous return. Blood cannot be returned to the veins, through the veins to the heart. So that's why there is cellular necrosis and death also might occur in this irreversible stage. General clinical features of shock are as follows. Hypotension, tachycardia, cold skin. Because of lack of metabolism or slow metabolism, skin temperature is not, is not stable. Rapid shallow respiration. Rapid respiration to compensate all the functions that are not proper at that time. There is drowsiness, confusion, irritability, oliguria, elevated or reduced central venous pressure and also multi-organ failure. Multi-organ failure is because blood supply is not enough for all the organ, for more than one organ. Oliguria is when urine output reduces up to less than 30 ml per hour. Medicine that we can provide to manage shock is phenylephrine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, and dobutamine. We can also provide this medicine if the patient goes unconscious due to shock because these all are emergency medicine that are also called as lifesaver medicine which are used to help patient regain their consciousness and regain their vital time stability. Nursing management can be, first of all, there should be an initial assessment, that is airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. That this is done because shock is a life-threatening condition and maintaining this ABCDE is the first priority. After that, we have to maintain airway. Effective airway will maintain effective ventilation and pressure of oxygen and pressure of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide which has been disturbed will be re-maintained. Control of blood loss or hemorrhage should be done because due to blood loss there are many essential nutrients that are required for the body which have been lost outside. So there should be control of blood loss or hemorrhage. Resuscitation should be provided on the basis of need. If there is need, if the patient is at wards where there is a need of resuscitation, it should be provided. It helps to retain pulmonary and cardiac function. Next point is about Trendlenburg position. This position is provided so that the blood can return through the veins to the ventricle of the heart. This is a Trendlenburg position. IV fluid replacement should be done if in case of septic shock because that restores the balance. From diagnosis and treatment, the cause of shock should be diagnosed on time and treatment should be started so that complications can be prevented. Systemic antibiotics should be provided for infection and use of emergency drugs can be done for stimulation of heart. Emergency drugs like adrenaline can be used that stimulates the heart. Urine output should be monitored because there might be persistence of oliguria and anuria. Danger signs like cyanosis, fainting, sudden unconsciousness should be monitored because this kind of symptoms, this kind of signs can be life threatening. Thank you so much. Next topic will be discussed in next video.